Sweet. All right, uh, we got this Hero 2001 F257 III. Those of you who follow this channel will probably recognize this as Jordan's truck. You know, he loves to bring me things to work on. Uh, this thing, like any good old Ford, it ran really good for quite a while and then decided to, for everything to break all at one time. I got it running, got the IPR fixed. Um, it fires up, it runs great, but it's got this weird interior issue. So my scanner was reading the door latch, not recognizing open close. Um, which I thought was the issue and then it turns out it was not then I realized one day while I was sitting here It randomly just started blaring the horn and the radio loves to come on and off uh, So after some looking you'll notice this windshield is nice and cracked up here Because uh, Jordan's an animal so you got this big crack spider web running all the way down this thing It's leaking so what happened is, is we got a bunch of rain right and apparently this is a common problem even if your windshield's not cracked They'll have a tendency of leaking in this corner. Um, there's not a whole lot of information on this, which is why I'm making this video that I've seen. Uh, there's some good write-ups in some forums, but that's about it. So you'll see here, I've already started. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is if it is a uh, two, early model 2001 or before, they ran what's called a GEM, which is a general, electric, general electronics module and it's on the back of the fuse panel, right? And then from 2001 forward on these body styles, that module moved up to the instrument cluster. But as soon as I pulled the cap off of the fuse panel, so you have your cover panel here, right? Which is just quarter turns on these and they'll spring out. And then you can drop this panel off. As soon as I pulled the lid, um, it's hot enough today that it seems to have dried out already, but you can see there's some evidence of moisture here. Water poured out of this into my fuse panel. As soon as I took this cover off, oof, water right out of this corner here. So then I said, all right, we're going to pull this. It's got four 10 millimeter bolts. You got one up top, two up top here, two down in the bottom, right? These ones, these little brackets over here are just clicking. So you can pull the little tab on the side here once you can move it to release them. And then pull up on this tab to release those two. These two I'm just leaving in place for now. Um, all of these plugs, except for this one, they're all just pushed to depress. So you press the little depressor and pull out, right? They all fit into only one spot, so you can't really get them mixed up. This one, which goes up here, has this little circle thing you got to pull out this direction. And as you pull it out, it'll come off. And then over here, underneath a little cap that looks like this, and sits on here. You take this cap off, is a 10 mil nut. I eat this one you take that off that has your primary power wire to the unit which is mixed up here somewhere there it is right there so there's your power in supply so you can get the whole panel out now upon immediate inspection on this back side you'll notice this plug is full of corrosion where it was getting the water in it I'm actually gonna go pick up a new one because I don't want to try and clean it out but we are gonna have to look up in this sliding plug and try and get all this cleaned up and cleaned out so that way we can put it all back together um, i'm going to put a bunch of dielectric grease in there to try and help with this and we're going to get this windshield replaced to try and prevent this thing from flooding but if you have really weird symptoms like your radio coming on and off your horn blaring randomly um your door not recognizing open closed uh i've heard of people having their blower motors work whenever they turn the ignition off this is most likely your culprit Oof. All right, so I've hit a small snafu. Um, what I'm gonna say is if you've gotten your replacement fuse panel and you verify that it's 100% correct, I would just look at the chapters and skip past this part. If you want to try and repair yours and or you kind of got one that was super similar but quite not quite the exact same, I'm gonna show you how you disassemble this puppy and you kind of build one working one out of two. So here's the old one. I've already disassembled it. You can see that's where all the corrosion was there. Uh, if you want to attempt to repair yours uh, just for fun or because you're a little broke, you'll see here. Let's see. There we go. Some good light. That's the corrosion on the pins. We have solder joints that pass all the way through to this board here. But I think you can probably, you'd honestly probably be all right just cleaning this trace here. Oop, let me see if I can get the light. Sorry. I'm in the shop on this little workbench here. But I'm thinking you could clean this trace here, clean all these pins off, re-solder these handful of joints, and you'll probably be all right. 
but I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I've got it flipped over. I have the new one. It was almost perfect, but not quite. So I'm going to show you how you break it apart. Take every fuse, every relay out of it. Make sure you take pictures of the correct orientation of everything so it's easier to go back together because finding the correct diagram is going to be tough and that might be a pain. Um, so you'll see here these, these little tabs on the side. I'm going to put a flathead in there and separate it just to pull this bottom piece off. Um, and then over here where the power supply comes in, there's two little tabs you got to put to press over there. I need both hands to do this. So I'm going to try and maybe get it done on camera. Maybe not. You never can tell with this stuff. Um, these little swinging legs, they can stay. So literally just go right in here, pry up on this bad boy and start separating very, very carefully. We got corrosion here and here, but not nearly as bad as our old board. So I'm gonna get a wire brush and clean that off actually, um, and get it cleaned up. But, so this pulls off this panel, right? And now this one should press through. We just gotta release this one, two tabs down here. We can slowly and gently press it out on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that just so I can check this side for corrosion too while I'm cleaning it. But, uh, is these two tabs in here have to be depressed to release then the rest of it should just jiggle out oh let's hold it up here all right yeah see how this side's nice and free this side is being retained so what i do so i put my thumb on the post and i just do it apply some pressure on it while i push those tabs back push out that little part voila Voila. And now you can just kind of work it out gently, just like that. So my plan was, is it appeared through the case that anywhere that I didn't have fuse inputs on this side, that the pegs were in place. Like you see these two pegs here, see how this has receptors and then this one doesn't. You can actually pull these off with pliers and move them, right? So if I wanted to say add, add fuses, I would just pull it off of this peg gently like that then I would stab it onto what I needed to right well turns out I didn't see completely right because this peg is missing this post is missing on this one and so on and so forth two missing here that are in this one shucks so back to square one we're gonna repair the corrosion on this so I'm gonna get this cleaned up, gently wire brush it, then I'm gonna call Clayton and be like, yo buddy, can you give me some solder? All right, here we are, circuit board repair. So you can see, maybe you can see, maybe you can't see, I have cleaned all of the corrosion piled up here off, but we have three bad solder joints. So I did what any good mechanic does. I found a Clayton and I was like, help. So he's going to add us some solder into these joints to refix them up because he's super smart like that. And then we're going to stick that puppy all back together and shove it back in the truck. Found the creature in his natural habitat. Soldering. Soldering circuit boards. I'm using oh, a chisel. And a pitcher of tea. That's not empty. Potatoes and eggs around him. Unfazed. The man, the myth, the legend, he has done it. We got new soldered joints on our pins. They're nice and clean, not touching, no connectivity between them. We are gonna go put this puppy back together and finally slap it into the truck. So let's get it done. All right, here we are. Gently put it all back together. That is the replacement that didn't work. So this is all put back together. Now I just gotta look at my little map and put all the fuses and relays back in and we're ready to install. Uh, putting putting this all back together was super easy, man. Um, everything just kind of slid right in. I just very gently got all the pins lined up, made sure nothing was stuck, and then just squeezed it and it clicked right back in, and voila. All right, here it is in the truck. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I mean, that probably took about, I don't know, two full minutes. So I'm gonna go hook the batteries up now. This particular truck, 
I'm gonna know pretty quick whether or not this worked. That radio liked to just come on. And it was pretty much always coming on, going off, coming on, going off randomly with no key in the ignition. So let's see if that thing comes on now. All right, moment of truth, both batteries are hooked up. Sorry, it's dark, it's getting kind of late here. But I see light in the cab, but that light seems to strictly be my flashlight. Now, see what happens if I turn this key on. Oh, goodness gracious. I got nothing. Nada, no power. That's not good. A few moments later. So, <laughs> this is uh, a lot further down the line. Uh, by a lot further, I mean a few months now. But uh, we had to cut this roof off and splash it, which is a video that'll be coming out here shortly. Um, he just got done painting it after putting it on. So this whole thing is sectioned from about here down. That's where the water leak was coming. Um, apparently it's a super common problem on these trucks. The windshield line rusts out like that. And then the water runs down your A, a pillar here right onto your circuit board. But I realized I forgot to update this. So this is the repaired board. Uh, I had my moment of failure there and I thought, yep, blew it, gonna have to order a factory one. Then I realized that I'm just really dumb and I forgot to hook up the primary power wire over there. So once I hook that up, I don't know if the battery's disconnected or not in here. Hey Jordan, I'm ripping cigs in your truck right now. <laughs> nah, see, now we got all of our gauge power, low plug lights, everything, everything works. She cranks up just fine. Um, yeah, I just, you know, should have put power to the fuse box. But the repair worked great. Um, if the video helps you, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you wanna see more repair videos about how we fix this problem or anything else, Hit the subscribe button and there will be more coming uh, like this Mercedes and more work on the Bentley there in the future.